it starts it starts getting a little bit um, it, well it's very soiled isn't it of course but, it is but, 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 but the thing is all the violence that's been caused has really come from the left so when you actually place Hitler on the far right, it does mm-hmm. get my go up a little bit. Okay, th- thank you. I mean, that's, that's really interesting. Don't you but you think so? Because he was a socialist. You know more than I do. But and, and, and let's face it, calm, you know, I mean, fascism is just, um, is just a, 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 a little stem of Marxism what, what, anyway. What the destabilization did do is it brought in, it, alla- it gave opportunity to extremists, and okay. that's exactly what happened. And then Hitler worked out that dictatorship was the, the most effective way of leading, so he, he actually managed to kill his own mentor, effectively. And, um, and do you know it, why he killed his own mentor? Because he realised he realised that uh, the only way to be in proper power is to get rid of anybody who could oppose you. Well, actually, this, can I can I add to that little do. to add that little story? So um, I can't remember. The, I still can't. I can't remember the guy's name. It was um, oh, I can't remember. So anyway, so um, Hitler went to um, he met this guy who had a German name, or Austrian name rather and was blown away by his performance on stage and this guy was a hypnotist and a fortune teller and um, Hitler also believed in the occult by the way I'm not sure if you knew that and this guy's stage presence was so good and Hitler wanted to in fact this guy taught Hitler how to speak he taught him how to do the dramatic pause he taught him how to get the audience on his side and um, to cut a long story short um, what happened was he pre- this guy predicted he was in, he was in a bar uh, he, he one of the never sorry so he was in a bar and he was actually told because he apparently he could predict the future and he was asked by this racing drive manage dr- uh, racing uh, team manager who was going to win the the race tomorrow and he actually wrote down two names on a piece of uh, on, in, and put them in an envelope and says one of them is going to win the race and the other one's going to die. And sure enough, um, one of them did win and one of them did die. And he, apparently he, had, he had attempted to intercede to prevent the team from letting the driver the following day. But what really convinced Hitler was when one of the uh, buildings in Berlin, it wasn't the, Royal, uh, the Opera House, I got that wrong, one of the buildings in Berlin was burnt down, although some believe that uh, this guy actually burnt it down on purpose. Um, but... He then became Hitler's mentor as a, as a way, as, a, as, to, as to become a speaker and a performer and things like that. Turns out that this guy was a Jew. It was an open secret, but it, it turned out he was, he was Jewish and Hitler had him killed. Mm. Apparently. Oh, there you go. Very interesting. Oh, you like stories, don't you? Going, indeed. But going, going back to the, the whole point of strength through unity and identity is the fact that the Germans got it horribly wrong because uh, first the Americans got it wrong first what happened is if you if you if you annoy people if you make them desperate enough to realize they have to unite of course that gives them that re- reinforces their identity and makes them stronger so the Germans and that started the ascent of the third reich then what the third reich did their mistake was they started bombing England they didn't cause devastation they just bombed and of course that annoyed people it made them furious it was like it was like a shaking a you know a beehive and of course what it did do is exactly that it made people desperate and it made them realize that they have to unite and, and remind them their identity to win and that's exactly why the king of England at the time begged Winston Churchill to take over and that's what inspired Churchill's speech we shall fight them in the trenches we shall fight them in the fields we shall never surrender that w- that strength that the English had miraculously acquired was because of the German mistake and it's called mirror neurons if you are reminded of something then you become more of what you're reminded and it doesn't matter how you're reminded of it so it could be in with smoking for instance the the nasty cigarettes the nasty pictures and cigarette packets actually increase smoking because pictures of lung cancer remind you of smoke remind smokers of smoking so they want to smoke more now you all you have to have a look at throughout the world is how badly people get their foreign policy wrong because 
all that happens if you become anti anything it makes those people you're anti reminds them to be more of what they are and makes the problem a lot worse so for instance any so you know little north korea you know they they obviously the little um, dictator there wants to feel powerful and have his little bombs but nobody could really care less about him so the point is ignore the guy ignore him that's what he deserves or if you don't ignore someone annihilate them so you either have to ignore or annihilate if you do anything in between you just make the problem worse and the science of it is mirror neurons so well, there all this anti-muslim rhetoric same thing you know trump going anti-muslim this anti-muslim that let's let's put in a few bands here and there it just annoys them it just gives fuel to the fire of the extremists what you have to do just like terrorists is ignore or annihilate one or the other yeah it's it's interesting because you know, there's a couple of points there you talked about desperation and and um you know you, you had the german people who were desperate and then you had hitler who actually inspired them to rise and you know and and, and that's why people change people change or people do things out of either inspiration or desperation um, desperation being the far more effective of the two, but well, one thing that really uh, because, <laughs> because really that's today, desperation you know, is fear. When, when, when Theo said to the, the first when we first started this podcast, and he says, "Oh, let's not talk about Harry and, and Meghan," and that's exactly what he's done. He hasn't talked about Meghan and my, Meghan, um, Meghan and Harry. They, he's just drifted off the subject because um, no, well, the, the today we just the, went the with family, the flow. The royal family know strength through unity through identity and they're making sure that's exactly what's happening so but they've always been quite united um in in that respect um you know even you know you you talk to someone like prince philip and everyone thinking oh he was a greek prince he's come over actually well he was related to lord mountbatten wasn't he don't know Uh, he, he didn't know that so he's not that he's, he's not that Greek. So the thing is, there's um, yeah, the royal fam. I mean, I, I I've got to say, I, I'm probably one of uh, when people say to me they're not royalists, I can't understand it because I'm a full fledged royal supporter. Of, you know, I believe that this this uh, engagement is going to do so much for the royal family in terms of bringing them up to, into more modern times. It'll also make them more popular. Providing uh, Megan is handled right. See, the, the people say, "What is the point of the royal family?" Tourism. Now, uh, tourism will increase because of this, by the will. way. But all you have to do is look at any institution. Any institution holds dear to its heart any form of tradition, because tradition is roots, its history, the deeper your roots, the stronger you are. It's going to be more important now having the royal family. Do you know why? It's not a multiple choice question. Okay. The, the, the reason why is because the thing is, if you look at all the other countries or many of the other countries out there, they don't have a monarchy. All right? So these countries are losing their identity more, more quicker than the UK is. So if you want to know why Brexit happened in some ways, I would not be surprised if there's a fact of that our British identity was a big factor here in terms of, yeah, we didn't want immigrants because people worry about immigrants, but because I think they were always also worried about their identity as Brits. You know, they want to call it Great Britain. They want, it's almost having that great in Great Britain, which we associate with the royal family, which is associates with the British culture, something that is being depleted in other and, countries. And, you're right. and look, the royal family are bringing in a foreigner. Like she's, she is an immigrant, actually. And they are... They are integrating her and they are making her convert to their religion to conform to their identity and etiquette. They're showing everyone how to do it. And the government is doing it horribly wrongly because, of course, the, the government have no power, really, because they're shackled by political correctness and all the donors that, that, that they And have. the voters, and what voters are going to think of them. So they're so concerned about public opinion. And, and, that, and in some ways, that's why, I mean, I've got, that's why I, uh, it's not that I like Donald Trump, but... The, the guy is doing what he wants to do I mean I, I don't know look, I don't agree I mean it's quite you know what he's done in that tweet is, is, is lacks, lacks but class you know, his answer his answer is quite right he says why are you bothering with me when you need to be bothering with the real problem so at least he knows not to waste his time rather than yeah, what, what you know, parliament did it, yesterday you see there's, there's certain things but again it's, it's a level of decorum it's a level of behaviour in the right place at the right time was it appropriate to share a far right video of the of the, of the, of the was it uh, I don't 
don't know. Some well, quite frankly, I'm president, and I, I, I'm president. I can do kind of what I want as long as my heart's in the right place. Well, he didn't have to retweet. I mean, the thing is, he can come up with his own. He's, you know, he's come up with his own version of what he thinks. He's, he's well, put he, the ban in he's place. He's got flappy tongue syndrome, as we as we discussed. Yeah, flappy tongue syndrome is uh, it can be a problem. He lacks the experience to be a president. He lacks the diplomacy. Not that I believe diplomacy is the best thing. I mean, diplomacy is just another word for telling you people what they actually want to hear rather than the truth. Um, yet, we think that diplomacy is actually a good thing. And I'd rather, he- I'd rather hear it. I'd rather hear it, you know, see how people say it. Um, and, and folks, on that, it's like when they talked about Jacob Rees-Mogg and, oh, it was outraged that he was anti-gay marriage or he was anti-abortion um, and 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 I'm thinking you know and people say you know even gay said oh no because he's anti-gay he's not that he's anti-gay he's just he, he believes in his religious beliefs and he's entitled to do that it's not he's not going to change that when he, if he ever got into power not that he ever will I don't think he's ser- be taken seriously enough but the thing is he's entitled to his opinion based on his religious beliefs and we've got to respect that because if we all thought the same way I mean actually something Bill Crosby said um, uh, Bill Co- not Bill Crosby Bill Cosby uh, before he got in, <laughs> before he got uh, before he got um, into trouble. Into mm. trouble. They're saying. He says. I says. I don't know. Th- uh, I, I, um, I don't know the. You know. He says. I don't know. Um, I know that the secret. To, I don't know what the secret to success is, but I do know that you can't please everybody all of the time, or something along those lines. And um, I think Abraham Lincoln beat him to that by by several decades, didn't he? Did he? Um, Bill Crosby says something, and, I, and, and it slipped my mind right now. But yeah, but but all the, but you can't please everybody. But the thing is, you know, and that's what Donald Trump is is probably doing very well. He knows how to please the people that who voted for him. He doesn't really give a shit about everybody else. So they can carry on doing what they're doing. They're still giving him publicity, but at the same time, he's still doing the best he can for his people. Now, I don't think he's going to achieve much. There's too much bureaucracy in politics to actually be able to achieve anything you really want to achieve, which is, I suppose, where Theo's benevolent dictator comes in. Well, you're absolutely right. The, now, what's, what's interesting, again, in terms of tradition uh, is is how the, the, may, the gender roles are also changing. Now, we did talk about this, about this a little bit last week, but there have been quite a, a couple of large publications this week as well on uh, personality types. And on uh, there was another publication on pressure and females again. Um, so females have role strain because they, they are now being told you, have, you can get everything. Your right is to have everything. So they feel a pressure on them to have everything. But you can't have everything. You, can, uh, you have the right to choose what you want, but once you choose it, you have to stick to it. In other words, if you want a career, have a career. If you want a family and you want a good, functioning, warm, cosy, f- f- matriarch-led family, you can't have a career as well. Sorry. You can't. But you have the right to choose. For instance, you ask a guy, a guy, a guy wouldn't dream of doing both. He'd go, uh, my career, obviously. Or he'll say, you know what, I want to be a house husband. He's not going to do both because he knows it's not possible. Here's the other thing. I don't there think, actually, hold on a second, I don't think in this day and age you can actually have, um, unless you're actually earning a lot of money, um, you, you probably, probably need both par- partners Correct. working these that, days. So see, the, Again, that's a problem with our society because in Mediterranean uh, cultures and in Northern Asian cultures, the husband and wife can work because they have a large extended family helping out with the children. Here... Where we're socially disintegrated, it's just not possible, and that's a catastrophe. Now, the, uh, the another large publication this week uh, talked about how you have different personality styles and how your personality style can affect your physical and mental health throughout life. So, for instance, if you are uh, someone who is a what we call a uh, it's, uh, it's a complier, shall we say? A conscientious person. It's called the a consci- a personality trait of conscientiousness. He's a disc profile. Sorry? Do they use the disc profile? I'm not sure what it is, but it's, uh, in this case, it's conscientiousness. Now, people with a 1%, in- one point increase in conscientiousness have a 36% drop in the likelihood of strokes. Um, and the reason for that is that these people are more likely to comply. So they are not going to indulge in risky behaviors. They're going to be more disciplined and go to the gym and eat healthily. 